I have to say when Apple was launching their new OSs during WWDC 2024, I was not very excited, especially with iOS 18 because not a lot was announced. That is until we waited till the end of the keynote and got all of the Apple intelligence features. Are they any good? Are these features what AI is supposed to be for your devices? Uh, let's talk about this in our video. Now in this video, we're gonna primarily talk about iPhones and we also pushed out a video showing off these new iPhone 16 and 16 plus phones and also these new iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max phones. So you wanna go check that out and you can click on the top right to go check it out right now. Now, Apple has announced a lot of new OSs. So iOS 18, iPad OS 18, a new watch OS, and of course, a new Mac OS. With all of this, they also announced their integration with ChatGPT and Apple's own Apple Intelligence. Let's talk about Apple Intelligence for a minute. First of all, it is not available right now. It is gonna be available later in the year and most likely it's gonna be launched around the launch of the iPhone 16. Now, there is also something important to note, the kind of processing capabilities that Apple Intelligence requires, you will need possibly an iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max at the minimum and then of course the newer iPhones will also support it and then iPads with M series chips will support it. So not every device is gonna get Apple intelligence and that is a little bit of a limitation. Now with Apple intelligence, Apple promises a lot of new features in day-to-day -day usage and I think the biggest one out of that is gonna be Siri integration and in this, the personal assistant will become actually what it was promised to be back when iPhone 5S was launched with Siri. Now, Siri is an assistant that does things for you which are integrated into the phone and you can set up certain things. You can do basic things like set up a timer. You can also make phone calls. Those are fine. But now you will have an actual conversation of where the, the assistant giving you ability uh, that you did not have before. So for example, you could tell it to open particular images from a particular area or you could tell it to open certain type of images from your gallery. And then you can say, for example, in continuation, to copy this image and paste it in the notes app. This was a demo that they gave. And then anything like this. So you could say, for example, search for files uh, that I was working on last week, and it'll show you those files. Now this will truly make interaction with touch as well as interaction with mouse and keyboard less for a lot of people. If you do start using the Apple intelligence systems, you will be interacting with your devices less with physical contact. So with less with touch, you'll not be searching for things as much and you'll just be telling the assistant to do those things for you. Another cool feature is the fact that you can actually type to uh, the assistant. So instead of speaking things at all times, so if you're in say a busy place and you want to ask your Apple intelligence or AI assistant to set up something for you, you can do that by typing and that was also a demo given within the keynote. So all of these things are really cool. But then there's a ton of chat GPT integration. So you can have things like rewriting emails. So if you've written an email and you want it to be more formal, you can just select that text and have it rewritten for you. You'll also have things like images that you can sort of improve automatically. So you can tell it to improve an image for you automatically. It'll do that, but then you can also select things and erase them from the background, which we've seen with other devices as well. This will be slightly better integrated into the operating system, which means that the assistant will be able to do it for you. So there are tons of other integrations, for example, in the calculator app and in the notes app, which looks cool. And we've already seen demos of that, and you can actually use some of those features today, but full-fledged Apple intelligence will be rolling out later this year. Apple in their infinite naming wisdom also launched something called Genmoji, which is like next generation of Memoji. Now Genmoji will be able to generate emojis with the AI built in. So you'll be able to tell it certain sort of things and it'll generate that emoji for you. For example, a dinosaur on a surfboard, et cetera, et cetera. So those things will be, I think, the most used uh, form of uh, AI on uh, the iPhone in the future because that will definitely take over the compute for Apple. But there is also certain other features which will make it really useful. For example, it will automatically select what important notifications are in your system. So for example, if you are somewhere busy and you are on a sleep mode, but if a really urgent notification pops up, it will show that to you automatically and it will decipher that. 
Now, Apple pushed a lot in terms of privacy and said everything will happen on device. And then you'll also be given a private cloud compute, which will be based on Apple's M series chips and a server will be built. And out of that, you will get private clouds, which will help you process your information for Apple intelligence. But all of this data will not be stored and it will be deleted immediately or at least that's what Apple is saying. So all of these features, we're really excited about those, but let's quickly get into iOS 18 and some of the new features that we think are really impressive. So with iOS 18, I think one of the biggest things that Apple introduced right off the bat was customization of the home screen. So not only can you switch the dark mode, light mode wallpapers, but you can also tint up your icons. You can also put your icons in a dark mode. Now this looks buggy right now. I actually tried it out. It's not the greatest looking. I hope they improve it and make it slightly better. The tint looks a little bit shabby, but it is customization that people have been asking for and it is inbuilt without jailbreaking. You can also move the icons around and make your home screen messy if that's what you're looking for. I personally like it the way it is, but a lot of people like a lot of customization and you can obviously do that and you can have different layouts on your screen as per your requirement. You can also lock apps for the first time around so you can pick any app basically from your lineup and require Face ID to open that app and then you can also hide certain apps if you don't want to show them in your home screen and they will be hidden in a hidden folder all the way to the right of the home screen. Now, customizations also extend to the lock screen. So you'll now be able to finally change your camera and flashlight icons. If you are sick of not using them and having that space wasted, you can have your own icons placed in there for whatever app that you use frequently. So if you're somebody who's texting more than using the flashlight, you can just basically have your text button over there or phone or whatever that you want can be fixed over there. Another cool thing that allows you customization in the home screen is the fact that you can just now select widgets and resize them. And then you can also tap on any app and convert that into a widget and it will hide the app icon and convert it into a widget. You can also convert a widget back into an app. So that is super cool. It allows for a lot of customization and layouting. So if it's an app that you use frequently, say for example, calendar, all you need to do is long press, convert it into a widget and the calendar app itself will be gone, but the widget will be there on the home screen. Pretty cool. What is also interesting is now you have a lot of customization available for the control center. In fact, you have several pages of the control center and you can have your own controls set up. You can also control the first main page of the control center. So if you just want connections as the first thing that drops down from the control center, you can have that. Or if you want to change it around, you can do that as well. You can also add and delete pages. And if you don't want these customizations, you can just have the basic control center and that's great. But also the fact that you'll be able to add more things into the control center, it'll be opened up to third parties as well. So if there is an app that has a feature or a toggle that can be added to the control center, it can be made available now. There are also certain animations that are going to be improved. So for example, when you increase or decrease the volume, you can see the edge of the screen bumping in. This looks super cool and makes the overall uh, effect of the animation really improved and you will I can bet my money on the fact that you will see certain manufacturers replicate this through and through, no matter how much fun they made of this at launch. This is going to come to other devices as well. We're also seeing some new dynamic island animations as well, including the flashlight, which now can be focused for some reason. And we don't even know if this was a feature in the past, but now you can focus the light or make it spread and then also increase or decrease the brightness with this cool little animation that they've added. iPhones are also getting call recording, which will be a feature that will again come with Apple intelligence. And this will also possibly be limited to the newer iPhones, so 15 Pros and then the 16 series. But we feel that call recording is a feature that might actually show up on the non-Pro 15 series devices as well. And also transcription, which is something that has been added to voice memos. So you'll be able to record a voice memo and have a transcription, basically convert the audio into text automatically available in the voice memo app. We're also getting some cool uh, updates for messages. So messages can now be sent later. If you're somebody who likes to schedule messages, a birthday notification or whatever, you can send those later and those will work for both iMessage as well as text messages. And you also have some animations that have been added into messages. So you can select words and have those animations added. Previously you could send animations, but you had to do it for the entire message. But now you can select certain words and do that. And then 
more interesting than that is the fact that you can select any emoji as a reaction or a tap back is what Apple calls it. So you can have any emoji from the lineup of emojis as a tap back and with Genmoji, you'll be able to create an emoji, save it in your emojis and then use that for tap back as well. So <laughs> pretty cool. And I can guarantee that Genmoji is going to be the most used Apple intelligence feature. Now, if you use a Mac, another cool feature coming with the new Mac OS as well as the new iOS is the ability to mirror your iPhone directly on the Mac which will allow you to not only control the iPhone directly from there if your iPhone is on the side, uh, but also interact with it and also transfer information. So if you want to drop in a video file or pick up an image from the phone, you'll be able to do that with a UI directly on your Mac. This will be really useful for productivity and really useful for people like me who always leave their phone somewhere in the office and cannot find it and it will be right there on the screen at all times. So I don't need to constantly look away from my work and sort of interact with people. I can reply to messages. I can even answer calls right there. So iPad will also finally get a calculator app, which I think is going to be the biggest thing uh, for a lot of people. We already got the weather app and now we got the calculator app. Wow, it took them so many years. But the calculator app will also get some really impressive AI features along with the ability to just scribble down uh, calculations and have Apple solve them for you. We have a smaller version of that available right now. But as we go towards a full launch of Apple Intelligence, you'll be able to solve proper serious equations directly on the iPad, making it an even improved product for education. So that was a quick look at some of the features for uh, the new iPhones, iOS 18. What are your thoughts? What is your favorite feature? Let us know and I'll see you guys in the next one.